Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this webinar this evening, specifically focusing on um, investing abroad and uh, in the United States. We uh, we pleased to have you online this evening, and uh, just want to make sure that you can actually see us and that you can hear us. If you could go into the GoToWebinar control panel on the question box provided, then type in perhaps where you, which city you're uh, you're situated in, and we can actually see where you are based, and we can actually um, make sure you're listening in there. Um, Scott, if you can just change me to an organizer so I can see the question box provided as well. Uh, okay. Great. So it's good to have you all online this evening. It's, uh, it's a new webinar that we've created specifically basing moves very, very quickly. And we're going to be sharing with you some new material this evening that no one's actually seen. In fact, uh, Scott was working tirelessly today getting this particular presentation on. So if you have listened to our webinars in the past, you're in for a treat. Uh, we've got some new uh, material. But also, we're going to be sharing with you some deals that have been uh, made over the last few months and, and maybe even 18 months and some of the returns that investors who've taken action in the United States have received. And and then potentially how you can actually get in onto this great opportunity. And my name is Ryan Pinnick. I actually met Scott many years ago in London when we were out there living uh, in the UK. And we met on the property seminar circuit actually. And Scott had uh, pretty much started off at IPS and he'll be talking a bit about that later on. And, and when I moved back to Cape Town uh, last year, about 12 months ago now, Scott mentioned this opportunity in the US and up until that point I'd been investing in the UK for about six or seven years but the opportunities in the UK had kind of dried up in terms of the net yields and the opportunity to buy below market value and also more importantly the finance options. So although I'd been investing for that period of time there weren't any opportunities ripe in the UK and that's still the case today actually. Now, the UK is an incredibly difficult market to make any money on. Uh, especially when you can compare it to the types of returns that we're getting in America at this particular point in time. So we'll be discussing a few of those points here this evening. So let's just see, for those of you uh, online, can you just type in, um, if you're a, a novice investor, type novice into the question box provided on the GoToWebinar control panel for, as far as investment is concerned. If you are someone who's invested, then maybe just type in how many years you've been investing and uh, we can basically get an idea of what type of expertise and what experience you have uh, on this particular webinar. So, uh, I, think, Ryan, I, think also, I think also if people have a preference for residential or commercial. Yeah, good, sure. So just to make myself clear there, um, if you can type those answers in the question box provided on your GoToWebinar control panel on the right hand side, that would be great um, and give us an idea of whether you're an experienced investor or a novice investor. Um, so that'd be fantastic. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to, to Scott who I just um, uh, had a meeting with him 12 months ago about this opportunity in the US and when he was talking about some of the returns and how the law actually favors the landlord in certain states in America, my ears pricked up and consequently since then went on to a buyer's trip, uh, the one in February this year, and we were talking about buyer's trip and how you can actually take advantage of us going over to America to buy property on your behalf. In fact, you know, perhaps you might even want to join us, which I would strongly recommend. And after having attended that particular buyer's trip in February, not only did I want to invest heavily in America, but uh, I had the, the privilege of getting the opportunity to join the IPS team, and it's been an incredible year both for us and our investors, the people who we look after. And the great news is that some of the opportunities we were looking at at the beginning of the year, although they aren't available, we've uncovered some new ones with similar, if not better, returns. And so that's what this webinar is all about. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Scott uh, for you to just uh, kickstart there on the information and the research that we've accumulated over the last 18, to two, 18 months to two years. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, Ryan. It's uh, great to have you online. As always, it's great to have so many people online. 
I know there's a lot of people that are online tonight and a lot of people that are asking for a lot of information in terms of where we are. So we are going to try and be as interactive as possible. If you do want to ask questions, please fire them through. Some of the information you would have seen before, uh, for some of you that have been to some of our events, because we believe that some of it is so important that it needs to be repeated. And some of it's brand new. As, as Ryan said, we pretty much put this presentation together today um, to highlight what we've been doing, what's been achieved in the last 12 months, and most importantly, how, how people, both current and, and new clients, can take advantage of the opportunity. So I think really, just to start off, the whole purpose of this presentation and why we're actually doing it, this webinar, and why we're actually here today is, and some of you would have seen if you, if you were at the USA Investor Breakfast, but Nelson Mandela has a quote, and it says, money won't create success, the freedom to make it will. And we believe that you need to actually take that another step further. Because the freedom to create global wealth is ultimately financial freedom. It's freedom for you. It's freedom for your family. It's freedom for your choices going forward. And the most important thing for us as a South African, and to be honest, any person living anywhere in the world, you want to be able to have the freedom to make the decisions and to make the choices that you want. And so what we did is we were sitting back and we were trying to decide how does one actually work out the impact of what it is in terms of living in South Africa. How does that impact our global wealth? And as a matter of interest, let's see who's wide awake here. And I do thank everyone for filling in the questions that, uh, that Ryan asked in terms of the different um, experience. It's been fascinating seeing what everyone is, is in and what they're looking to achieve. But as a matter of interest, what is CPI? What is CPI? What does it stand for and how is it calculated? If you can just type it in. The more interactive you are, the more you'll get benefit from this. So what is CPI and how does it actually relate? Okay, so Fernando's got it right. Let's see if anyone else can get it right. Fernando, how do they calculate uh, the answer? I can see Mark's got it right. Uh, Santi's got it right. Clive's got it right. Michelle's got it right. How do they calculate the consumer price index? Okay, so Rob Smith has got it right there, and he says it's a basket of goodies, and that's exactly what it is. They take 20 goods every single month, and they calculate the increase or the decrease in prices, and ultimately that's how they work out inflation. So what we did is we came up with the Global Wealth Index, and we decided that if you want to determine what your freedom is going forward, you need to be able to track and monitor your Global Wealth Index. And so we took a number of different items that most wealthy people would want to do on a, on a constant basis, like a family holiday to Disney World, a skiing holiday to a French resort, sending your kid to a private school, not necessarily in South Africa, but having the choice if you want to go to Australia and send your kid to, you know, Churchy, which is the equivalent of a St. Stithians or a Bishops in Brisbane, sending your kid to Harvard. Now, again, you don't necessarily want to send your kid to Harvard, but you certainly want to have the freedom to send your kid to any university in the world should they desire. And then ultimately, if you want to immigrate, so maybe you want to immigrate to Australia, maybe you want to immigrate to America, and how much it costs to actually buy your way in. And we worked out the Global Wealth Index, and we tracked it over the last 30 years. So we went back as far as 1983 through to 2013, and we wanted to work out the impact that it's had on South Africans. And just to give you some thought, just, just try and apply your mind here, but how much do you think it would have cost to go on a holiday in 1983, actually, to, to Disney World? What about in 1983, if I had one, one pound, how many rands would I have actually got? Anyone? And Mark, I see you've put in there, check out globalwealthindex.com. Uh, that's our website, by the way. <laughs> we own that. So don't, don't stress. It's, it's all good. Okay, uh, what about in 1993? So just to give you the answer, a holiday cost $715 in uh, 1983, and for one pound we could get 82 cents. In 1993, if you had one dollar, you could actually get three rand and, 11, and, and seven cents. To send your kid to a private school nowadays in Brisbane this year, the annual thing, is 39,356. 
And to immigrate to Australia now costs you $1.5 million. So the total number that we have basically devalued on a straight line graph is 77% a year for the last 30 years. Now that is hectic, 77% a year. And for those of you that want to work out the compound interest, it's 29.5% decrease every single year for the last 30 years. 29.5%. Now I have to say when, when we did this research, it actually sent a shiver down my spine because I realized, I mean, we knew there was a problem. We are all aware that things are happening, but I was never aware that it was happening that quickly in terms of what has happened over the last 30 years. The second thing that is very important is that we always take into account the RAND devaluation. So it's not just the basket of goods and the, and the, de, and the increase in prices, but also what has happened to the RAND. And we work with, a, with an expert, James Painter, and he, you know, he pretty much tracks the RAND. He's had an accuracy of more than 80% for the last, uh, since 2005, which is incredible when one considers how the RAND has gone up and down. And you can actually see the long-term graph back to 1990 through to this year. And interestingly enough, the RAND has devalued by 5.6% year on year. If you actually take the 30-year graph, though, the RAND has devalued by over 6% year on year against the US dollar. And something that I find very interesting is that we actually use James's research. And James, as I said to you, has this accuracy of over 80%. Now, I tracked his research and I literally go through every single day. I get the latest information in terms of where we are and exactly how we do it and what it is that we're doing. And really what, we, what I found very interesting is that James says the RAND is in quite a strong position at the moment. And like we saw in the last couple of days, it's even been as low as 940, 950. But in the next few weeks, in the next few months, it's going to start to break through the 10 Rand barrier. In the next couple of months, it's going to break through the 11 Rand 50 barrier and then the 12 Rand 50 barrier. And in the next couple of years, the target zone is between 14 and 21 Rand to the US dollar. And interestingly enough, he gives a, a probability of more than 90% in terms of this range. So if you are interested in this research, please get hold of us. One of our asset managers can actually take it through. But I believe if you're investing offshore, one of the most critical fundamentals you need to know is what's happening with the RAND, where it is in the short term so that you can take advantage because there's a really good argument in terms of taking advantage of the RAND now before it devalues in terms of the long-term slide, in terms of what is expected. And that's really where you need to speak to one of our asset managers to be able to get that sort of research in terms of where you actually are. Now, the question a lot of people ask is, what do you actually do? Now, we actually did some research about two months ago. We actually showed people, and I'm not going to go into detail in this. And again, if you chat to one of our asset managers, we'll actually be able to assist you and take you through all the details. But what we were just trying to show people was the different scenarios. Because it's one thing to look back 30 years, but what you do need to do is also look forward 30 years. And so if you put your money in the bank today, at an 8% return, in 30 years, your net asset value will be here by my mouse. You should be able to see it. If you put it into a good South African property with an 8% net yield and 12% capital growth, which if those of you who are unsure of that, that's actually the 30-year trend for South African property, the red line would be where your net asset value would be within 30 years. If you put it, if you decided to wait a year because you said the RAND was too weak at the moment, and then it was going to strengthen to nine rand to the dollar in a year's time. And then you invested in American property. That is where your net asset value would be in a year. Uh, sorry, in 30 years. If, however, you took action today with where the rand is currently against the US dollar, and you actually benefited from the net passive income on the property and the capital growth, you would actually be 10% better off in terms of your net asset value in 30 years' time. And finally, if you take into advantage the, the impact of gearing and you bought a good American property based on 30 year averages, your net asset value would be 79% more than actually buying a prop, an, an American property cash. Now, what does that mean overall? Well, overall, the difference between leaving your money in the bank in South Africa and buying a good American property is 1600%. The difference between buying a good South African property and a good American property is 439%. So if you take into account our global wealth index, and if you take into account the cumulative 
problem that we have equals 2,300%, you need five offshore properties. You need five properties in America, 5.2 to be exact, to be able to offset the challenge in terms of what is actually happening to us as South Africans in terms of our global wealth index. That is why it is so important, and that is why we've made it our passion to actually go out and help others. You know, at the age of 22, I was in London, and I bought my first house back in South Africa in Rondebosch, and I was actually searching today to find some pictures, and here's a picture. We knocked the house down, and we developed it into six townhouses. So that was the first time that I did an international transaction, and I had to deal with all the problems of, because before we knocked it down, we kept it as just a tenant house, and I remember my brother you know, trying to ask him to be to be a, a, a management agent. And I used to give him a case of beer every month until they stopped paying. And then when I said, but you need to go and collect the rent, he said, Scott, I'm a doctor, not a debt collector. And this is when I started to understand the real challenges at the age of 22 of investing internationally. This was our first house in London that we bought in 2002 at the age of 24. And it was actually this this house here. It's a, It's an old council house, but it was on a beautiful big uh, piece of field or, or paddock, as they call it there. Or, and it was just outside Wimbledon Station, about five meters from Wimbledon Station. It was just after September the 11th. A lot of people told me that interest rates were going to go up. England was invading Afghanistan. Oil prices were going to go up. Inflation was going to go up. But to be honest, we made it simple. We added this conservatory on. cost us about 30,000 pounds. It meant that we turned a three-bedroom house into a five-bedroom house. This outside room we converted into another bedroom and another bathroom. So we turned a three-income stream house into a five-income stream house because you could rent out every single bedroom. We had about a thousand pounds worth of passive income after all expenses, and we basically made our numbers based on the actual investment. We didn't have analysis paralysis. We didn't get caught up in everything. But again, we realised the value of having the right partners on the ground and having the right information. And this was our first property in London that we bought in 2002. We then built. A house in, uh, and sorry, after that, well, after we remortgaged this house, we then went and bought another one in Wimbledon, and we bought one every year um, going on for years and years and years. Because if you live in a property and then move out, there's no capital gains tax. We built a house while we're living in London back in South Africa, Atlantic Beach in Cape Town. It was this beautiful four bedroom home that really was our dream home. And um, unfortunately, for us doing it long distance, it was an absolute disaster. Even though my background is construction and property management and property development, I really just couldn't manage it long distance. And the quality was terrible. It took about, uh, it was about 50% over budget and it took about eight months longer than it was actually due. And I eventually ended up having to sell my dream home in 2007 because of the quality. And, and that was when, and it was the catalyst that we said, we will only do international property if we deal with partners on the ground because it's the only way to do it. In terms of our experience, we've now gone all the way through we're currently doing a commercial building in America. It's an office park. It's worth $16 million. We've got a cash-on-cash -cash yield of over 15%, an IRR of 23%, and we've got financing in place for 50%. So really in terms of the spectrum, we, we've got a lot of experience. We've helped over 2,000 people invest internationally to a value of $1.7 billion. We're the only company that specializes in international investment. That's all we do is international property. We've got offices in South Africa, Australia, the UK, and the USA, and therefore provide you with a global platform. I think the most important thing that we do is actually our millions that we spend on research. You know, we've been in America seven times in the last 17 months. We spent 2.3 million rand physical money spent in terms of traveling there and investigating the markets. We pride ourselves on finding our best of breed partners. I truly believe that after doing this for over 10 years, the best skill set that we can bring to the game is the ability to find the best people on the ground so that we can find and, and take advantage of, of the opportunities. We've got a sophisticated IT platform which provides us with efficiency and transparency in terms of our clients. We also pride ourselves on our after-sales division. We believe that we provide the only private banking service in the market. It's the exact same between Investec and one of the local banks. You're looked after, you have a private banking solution and you're looked after from beginning to end. And then Ryan always talks about the inner circle and the importance of the inner circle and what our inner circle does. And because we are investors, the whole philosophy of IPS is, is Zig Ziglar's principle. If we help enough other people get what they want, we can have anything we want. And because of that, and because you're part of the inner circle, 
And because we're part of the inner circle, we offer our clients opportunities to off-market. I mean, we were just talking to John Chin, funny enough, I'm not sure if he's still online, but he's up in North Dakota as we speak, and he was just telling Ryan and I about some fantastic opportunities that are coming to market, and we're going to have the first access of anyone in America or in the world in terms of getting access to it. And that's what we mean by the inner circle. And then we've got all the qualifications for anyone that's interested in that stuff. Um, I'm a member of the CRS, which is Certified Residential Specialist, which is the highest qualification you can get globally in terms of property investment. And then the ARPP, we're also a member of the Association of International Property Professionals, which is the organization run out of London. And it's the governing body for helping people invest internationally. And we were actually the first company in South Africa to be invited onto their panel. And we won the award in 2008 for the best company in Africa in terms of helping people invest internationally. So that's who we are. But what have we actually done in the last 17 months? You know, we, we went to America in 2010 because we knew there was opportunity there. We spent five weeks there, but we couldn't find partners on the ground we could trust. We went back in 2012. We decided the market was ready. And this time we went with a different strategy and we found the right partners. In the last 17 months, we've acquired 251 properties to a value of $25.7 million. We've had a capital growth of between 10 to 30% on those properties, and that's in US dollar terms. We've had net yields of 8 to 15%. We've done five buyer's trips. And lastly, a lot of people say to us, well, have I missed the boat? No, not at all. On our very last buyer's trip in July, we bought another 171 properties, and every single property, both residential and commercial, had an IRR of over 20%. A lot of people are saying to us, well, what is the next trip? Why do you go on these buyer's trips? And we've pretty much got our next one, USA buyer's trip number six. And there's five major reasons, although this one has a sixth reason, why we go on these buyer's trips. The first one is that you get the right information. A lot of people, we were going over, we were buying property, and they would say to us, well, why should I, you know, what, how do I know it's the right information? How do we know that this isn't a scam? We said, well, it's simple. Come with us. Come with us. Get on the ground. Come and get the right information. Use your gut feel when you're on the ground, when you're reading about the information, you're not getting third-hand information. The second thing is come and meet our partners. You come. We're completely transparent. We are basically going there and buying property. We're probably, you know, doing all the research. We're investing. We're meeting the partners. We're asking all the right questions. And we invite people to come along and to experience it with us. And most importantly, shake our partners' hands, look them in the eyes. And that's everything from the accountants, the lawyers, the management agents, the inspection agents, every single person involved in the transaction from beginning to end. Then we also help people take action. You know, there's no point in going all the way to America. I've heard some ghastly stories of people going to America. People weren't ready. They go there. They don't find the right opportunity and they come back incredibly frustrated. We help you. We understand what it is you're looking to achieve before you go so that when you're there, you can actually hit the ground running and you can take action. And then I believe that no, you know, all work is, uh, is not good. You need to have some fun as well. And so we have a lot of fun when we go there. We certainly take advantage. There's no point in going all the way to America and not taking advantage of their incredible tourism opportunities. And then the last one that is incredibly interesting and people underestimate is that one of our partners is Henny Besaidenot. Now, Henny has taken $4 million and uh, about four years ago, I started investing. Myself and him and, and another partner went to Australia. We started with about $4 million. It's now worth $40 million. And that's in residential development and commercial opportunities. We were able, with our strategy there, to be able to list that company. It's now worth over $200 million in Australian terms. And I think one of the greatest things that I love doing, and I'm sure Brendan and, and, and Ryan and, and Yaku and, and Teresa and everyone else that's been on the buyer's trips can attest, when you actually go with Henny, it's so awesome. I know John Chin certainly can. Learning from someone who's got so much experience. He, you know, he's worth a lot of money here in South Africa. He's got a lot of experience in property. He's, he started investing offshore seven years ago in the UAE, then has gone into Australia and is now investing with us in America. And he's coming on the buyer's trip now with us at the end of October. And, and I learned so much from the quality questions that people like that ask, how they manage the risk, how they look at the opportunities. So no matter where you are on the spectrum of your sophistication, if you're at the top end of sophistication, well, then you get to, to work and, and to experience and to work with the best. 
And if you if you below that, well, you get to learn from the best. So really, it, it is a great opportunity. And then something that's completely unique this time is that we've actually managed to get 10 VIP tickets to Mega 8 Partnering. And that is where you get together with some of the best people in America, both businessmen and property people. You get to learn from them. You get to experience it. And, and what's really exciting is that Henny's actually been invited as the number one guest from Africa to talk about international and global investing. So I think it's going to be fantastic. And we also get to spend the weekend with Jack Walsh, who's the CEO of General Electric. So if you if you hang around to the end of this webinar, I'll be able to tell you how you'll get to come with us and be part of one of those few remaining tickets, which we actually have for the VIP trip. Can I just jump in there quickly, Scott? Um, yeah, yeah. I know that uh, if anyone's actually interested in joining us on the bias trip, then type in bias trip now. Um, there's, a, there's a lot involved and there's a lot uh, of detail that we can uh, share with you about the itinerary, where we go, what we're going to do. I think Scott's going to talk a bit about that later on. So if you are curious about the bias trip and how you can take advantage of the fact that we're going to be there, um, then please just type in bias trip in the go to webinar control panel and uh, one of uh, myself or in, any one of the other asset managers can give you a call and give you a lot more information about that because I, I just want to emphasize Scott, I know you, Scott likes to uh, give as much value as possible but I think what we really need to emphasize here is that this is an incredibly unique opportunity not only to go on the bias trip and look at the deals that uh, we are accumulating for you but also specifically Henny, if you get, I had the privilege of meeting Henny actually just a few weeks ago for the first time and, and got to spend time with him and it was an absolute privilege. I think I spent about 20 minutes with him and to, to be able to hang out with a gentleman like that with such an astute investment mind and, and experience is, is, is exceptional. People would pay a lot of money for that. And then also to, to go on the opportunity to make a partner in eight and meet Jack Walsh, one of my favorite all-time entrepreneurs and the guy that, uh, if you haven't read any of his books, you should absolutely look them up. But this is a rare opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to know about dates and how you can get involved, and also, you know, um, you don't necessarily have to go. We can actually um, do work for you on your behalf. Then please type in your, uh, type in Biostrip now and uh, into the question box provided and, and we'll give you a call to give you more information. Sorry, Scott, go ahead. No, perfect. No, cool. Thanks very much, Ryan. So a lot of people also say to me, you know, why why America? Why why do you guys just focus on America? And, and my very first answer to that is we don't. Um, we've, we've invested heavily in South Africa. We've invested heavily in the UK and in Australia. But we've got a very sophisticated system that we use called our global property system. And what this system does is allow us to take into account all the different variables. It's actually a system that we built with Clem Sunter. And for those of you who've heard Clem Sunter speak, he's got a global scenarios in terms of the global economy. There's four different scenarios. And then there's three different scenarios for the South African economy in terms of where we're going. And for many years, we heard these different scenarios. We heard the different systems. But it's pointless having just theory. You need to have an actual model or a system to help you make the right educated and informed decisions. So we built the global property system about two years ago. And we actually use this as one of our sophisticated tools to help us know where we can get the best return with the least amount of risk. It's not based on a gut feel. It takes into account all the different paradigms, all the different research. And, you know, Ryan goes and talks about the research that we do. We spend so much money on our own internal research, but we also use some of the best partners globally in terms of their research and what it is they do. I mean, for those of you who don't know Clem, Clem Sunter, we only partner with the best. Clem Sunter was rated one of the top three most influential businessmen in South Africa. If you do scenario planning on google.com, he comes up top five in the world globally in terms of scenario planning. And what we did is we took Clem Sunter's methodology, if you want to call it, and we overlaid it in a four-dimensional model. And with that, it provided us with a system so that we could make the right decisions as to where to invest. And we're very proud to announce that we've actually brought out a book uh, with Clem in terms of, the, uh, in terms of the, the methodology and how we do it. We've actually got a foreword from Clem. And interestingly enough, I gave him a copy at the Wealth Masterclass a couple of weeks ago, and he's come back to me. I'm not sure, Ryan, if you even know this, but he's come back to me and, and uh, really has raved about the, 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 the science and the technology that we've got in there and the modeling. 
So it's really quite empowering for people to be able to have a system and a methodology to be able to make the right decisions. But I think the most important thing is that we only partner with the best. There's no point in going to the middleman. We like to go straight to the top. When people say, why America? You can get a hell of a complicated and get into the macro things about the economy and, and the fundamentals and everything else. But I also like to just look at it in simple terms. You know, this was a property that we bought in October and we bought it for about $85,000 at that time. It's now worth about $120,000. But interestingly enough, to replace this property would cost about $1,000 per square foot. Now, it's got about, it's about a $2,000 to, sorry, 2,000 square foot home. So it cost about $200,000 to replace this property. And therefore, whether you were buying it in October last year or whether you're buying it today, it, it's between 40 to 60% below replacement value. And while you're buying it below replacement value, that is when there's significant intrinsic value in the property. I also believe that when you're buying stuff at an 8 to 13% net yield, that for me is really significant when you were com compare it to say London or the UK, where you're lucky to get a two to 4% net yield. And here you're getting double, if not triple that, and you're buying it at intrinsic value. You know, the London market is the highest it's ever been for three months running now, it's the highest it's ever been. Therefore, it's completely susceptible to any global risks, either in the property market, in the, in, in the, in the local economy or in the global economy. Whereas here, if you look at it from a simple perspective, you're buying a property at 40 to 60% below replacement value, and you've got the net yield. And the great news is that recently we've also managed to get financing. So we've now got 50% financing for our clients as well, so that they can get the benefits of, of gearing in terms of it. The next thing is in terms of the research. And again, I'm not going to go into this in a huge amount of detail, but for those of you who are interested, please chat to one of our asset managers and they can take you through the detail. But if you look at The Economist, The Economist looks at the top 20 property markets around the world and has tracked them for the last 20 years. And interestingly enough, they value property, and it doesn't matter whether you're buying residential or commercial property. Property should be valued based on income and it should be valued based on affordability. You know, a lot of people get caught up in, in residential property and saying, you know, oh, but, you know, this is what's a willing buyer, a willing seller. And, and really, you know, but that is what it is if you're buying a home. If you're buying an investment, then you should be focusing more on the income side. And what we find very interesting is that the research that came out at the end of August from The Economist, that comes out once a year, has the United States at minus 12%. So it's 12% undervalued based on income, whereas it has Australia at 24% overvalued, and it has Britain at 14% overvalued. So these are the fundamentals. This is the research that we work on. We then built out, in terms of our global property system, the four most important fundamentals that one needs to take into account with any market is firstly the economic risk. Now, again, according to Clem Sunter and all of Clem Sunter's modelings, the United States is one of the strongest first world economies to be looking at globally at the moment. It's one of the first to be recovering and it's also one of the ones that has got the most sustainability in terms of where it's going. The second fundamental is the value of the property. So if you're buying something at an intrinsic discount, whether it's a share or a property, then you have a much greater chance of safety because there's much lower downside and you've got much greater chance of growth on the upside. The third one is the property fundamentals. You've got to take into account the population growth. Now, we actually use the IMF there, the International Monetary Fund, in terms of the population growth, because it's much better to be investing in a country like America, where you've got population growth, versus a place like Japan, where there's population decline, or in Europe, where there's population aging. I mean, Clem Santa always says, if you put a, a roof over any village in England, then you basically got yourself an old age home. You've got a major problem, and you've got to take population into account, because that is what will drive the economy. And that is what will drive the property market in the medium to long term. You've also got to take supply and demand into account. You can go to Spain right now and pick up a great deal in terms of property. But you've also got to understand they're giving passports away because they've got 700,000 properties oversupplied. They can't sell them. They can't rent them out. So supply and demand and having them in equilibrium is vital in terms of the long term. And when you look at the, what happened with the, um, with the, with the financial crisis, the countries that were worst hit, Cyprus, Spain, 
uh, Italy, Ireland, they were, they, even America, to be honest, was because they had an oversupply where the demand was not keeping up with the supply. Places like London, Australia, South Africa, where supply and demand were in kilter, then, then they were much more robust in terms of getting through the global financial crisis. Interestingly enough, in America, there was 10 million properties oversupplied. They've now been absorbed into the system. And now it is actually a buyer's market, not a seller's market. Well, sorry, the other way around. It's a seller's market, not a buyer's market, because that inventory has been sapped up. And, and now there's very few uh, properties in terms of the absorption rates on, on the market as we speak. And then the last one, and this is what a lot of people don't take into account, but it's actually the rule of law. You know, I stopped investing in South African residential investments in 2010. And the reason being, I just got sick and tired as a property owner of not having my rights protected. When my tenants didn't pay, I couldn't get them out. There was no legal way to get them out quickly. If you compare that to America in some states like Oklahoma, we can get them out in three weeks. In, in some of the worst states, like, like up in New York, where they're much more labor friendly, you know, or tenant friendly, it can take longer, it can take up to four months. But the bottom line is America is a massive place and we know which areas to invest in. But if you invest in the right areas that are, that are landlord friendly, then it takes between, say, four to, to seven, eight weeks to be able to get rid of a tenant. So your rights as a property owner are protected. And that is something that is critical to take into account because you can take a place like India where all the property fundamentals are right, but there's no rule of law and then it doesn't work on the global property system. And what this allows you to do is it gives you a blend between your risk to value and then also your returns, which take into account your yield and your capital growth. And this really provides us with a system to make educated and informed decisions as to where to invest. But you must understand, this won't be like this forever. We were investing very heavily in, in Australia over two years ago. And the system categorically told us that Australia was the place to invest. But things change and, and the fundamentals of the American market changed and the supply and demand got back into kilter and the economy started to improve. And now America is the number one place to look at. But a year ago, America was 19% undervalued and now it's 12% undervalued. So this isn't going to last forever. And, you know, in the next couple of, if not months, if not years, who knows, the market will, will change and then necessarily it won't be an opportunity. The thing I do love about America is that's massive and we can move from one opportunity to another. Like I just mentioned, John Chin has literally found us a brand new market, which we'll be investigating on the buyer's trip. And those that come on the buyer's trip will be the very first people to get access to this market, not only in America, but also globally. So let's look at some of the FAQs that people ask us all the time. Ryan, I see there's a lot of questions coming through here. So just before I do the FAQ, I just want to see if any of them are not going to be answered. There's a lot of questions and um, people are interested in the bias trip, which is great. Um, I just want to maybe point out something which I know we're not covering, Scott, on this particular webinar, is that, uh, and I think, I think this is something that uh, we shouldn't overlook, is that the IPS team and every single person who looks after you from an asset management perspective is an experienced investor. It's not, uh, we're not an estate agency, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, IPS is a very, very strong team, both, both on the uh, investment side, but also on the back end side. So we have people who are constantly speaking to our letting agents in the US to make sure the properties are let out. We have people making sure that the accounting is looked after and accounts are done on a regular basis and insurance is looked after and all that kind of stuff. And so I, I don't think we're actually covering that particular fact in this webinar, but I think it's critical because no one else in South Africa offers that level of service, which to be quite frank is essential if you are investing abroad. You want to have um, a team there that's looking after what it is that you are investing in. You know, um, I used to teach the Rich Dad stuff back in the UK and Robert Kiyosaki used to talk about having your power team in place. And so that's what IPS is, it's your power team, doing everything from finding the properties, financing the properties, letting the properties out, making sure the refurbs are done, making sure the properties are up to scratch, not only up to scratch, but making sure that they actually are the best types of 
properties in the area so that they get let quicker for slightly higher rents compared to everyone else. So I know that you, um, I know that you're quite a modest guy, and I thought I'd uh, mention that as well. So you know, when we're saying you're about, you, you know, type your number in and, and type your name in because you want to speak to one of the asset managers. You're speaking to an experienced person who's been investing both locally and abroad for quite some time. So any questions you've got and any any queries, particularly around the buyer strip or even investing in the, in America, just type in consultation and we will make sure that one of our asset managers will give you a call to ask any answer any questions that you've got there. Yep. No, 100%. And, and Francois actually asked a question. He said, uh, what happens if, it, if, if I can't go but I'm still interested in investing? Again, Francois, one of the asset managers will speak to you. We, you know, we, we offer a bespoke solution. So we need to understand what it is you're trying to achieve. And, and with their experience to exactly what Ryan's just said, they can provide that whole private banking service in terms of understanding what it is you're trying to achieve and then providing you with the right service that will suit your requirements. The question we get asked all the time, Ryan, is how do I actually choose the right partners? You know, a lot, a lot of people sit there and they go, well, well, how do I invest overseas? How do, how do you guys choose the right partners? And I always say that I think this is one of the greatest skill sets we've learned, having helped so many people invest, you know, over 2,000 people in the last 10 years. And don't get me wrong, we didn't, it wasn't all successful. We have made mistakes, both personally and, and, uh, and, and in terms of the big picture. But by doing it and with that experience, we've got better and better at choosing the right partners and actually finding the right partners on the ground. And, you know, there's that research that came out in 2010 that over 80% of people who invest offshore actually lose money. So that's South Africans. Over 80% of South Africans that invest offshore lose money. And the reason is, is that they don't know how to choose the right partners. They go out, they use their gut. They, they most importantly, they, they make decisions which are emotional decisions. They go to London for three days and they decide, well, I need to choose a property and they don't know how to choose the right partners. They don't get the right information. And I just wanted to share with people that the people that we've been partnering with just in the last 17 months in America. I mean, we've got George Ross, who is Donald Trump's lawyer and right-hand man and has been for the last 35 years. I've actually had the pleasure of playing golf with the gentleman and, um, and spending you know, time with him and learning from him and learning what works in the market. So, I mean, you're literally learning from one of the best in America in terms of the property market. J.D. Fox, who's one of the, the world's leading uh, property and wealth coaches, we've done a lot of work with him, and he's actually one of my personal business coaches. John Chin is, uh, runs a company called Deal Kill. He's one of our guys, our primary guys on the ground there that helps us choose all our different investments, vet all our different partners. And really what he does is follow the whole Warren Buffett scenario where you, you literally go in and you kill a deal. And only if he can't kill the deal do we actually invest in it. So we use him extensively and, and uh, actually exclusively have him for both IPS and Wealth Migrate, which I think is a huge accolade to our team that he was prepared. He was, he was working with many, many companies around the world and he finally whittled it down to four companies. And he's now actually gone on an exclusive basis with us. And the reason being is that he said he really likes South Africans. He loves coming to South Africa. And, and, and he likes working with us and the quality and the sophistication of our clients. So I think it's a huge accolade to South Africans in terms of what we're doing. We've got Grant Thornton as one of our major partners. They're actually an equity partner in Wealth Migrate. They're one of the top five accounting firms in the world. They do all our tax, our structuring, and our compliance. We've got Bridge Capital that does all our financing. They're one of the leading financiers in America in terms of helping people get credit ratings and actually build their credit rating. We've got Chuck Bretts, an associate, the legal firm. They're a large legal firm. They actually want to J, they're JT's personal uh, property lawyers. And we, we've actually signed them on as our legal counsel to overdo, overlook all of our legal stuff. We've got Marathon, one of, the, one of the most sophisticated management companies in America. We've got buy cash flow post, uh, properties that really help us buy some of the best value properties in and around Atlanta. We've got the Optimal Financial Group, which is an extremely sophisticated accounting firm and actually helps people build up their credit rating open bank accounts with Wells Fargo and, and, and do all the right structuring and tax returns, et cetera, et cetera. We've got the Florida Property Network that helps us find properties. We've got OneProp, which is an extremely um, big management company with over 3,500 properties under management. And these are just a few. You know, I, I really don't have time to go into everyone, but it just shows you the caliber and the quality of partners that we're dealing with. And as I said to you, I, I truly believe our greatest skill set is being able to go into a place quickly ascertain who the right partners are, and then find out who we can work with and how we can do it. 
In terms of the second question, it's how do how do we get the right information? And this, the only way to, to tell you this is that we do it with time and money. We fly over there, we constantly go to new markets, we check them out, we spend time on the ground, and we spend millions of rands on research. So far in America, to date, just in flights, hotels, car hire, etc., we spent 2.3 million rand to date flying to America, understanding the market. It took us over two and a half years before we launched the American market. It took us over a year in Australia before we launched the Australian market, also with four trips to Australia before we launched it. We spend a huge amount of time on our research and making sure that we've got the right research and the right partners so that we can get the right information. Because, you know, as Napoleon says, the right information at the right time is the nine-tenths of any battle. And that is for us what is most critical. The next question we get is, how do I know the right areas to invest? You know, America is a massive place. There's 300 metropolitan statistical areas in America. Now, to put that in perspective, Pretoria is an MSA, Joburg's an MSA, Cape Town's an MSA. We've probably got about 15 in South Africa. They've got over 300. They've got over 300 million people. So how do you know where to invest? Now, I'll give you one little tip. If you ask someone where the best place to invest in America is, or if you ask them whether the American market's going up or down, and they answer that question, then they're talking rubbish, and they don't know what they're talking about. Because the American market is so different. Every state is different, and then every city within a state is different. And so you've got to ask yourself where to invest, why to invest there, what are the fundamentals, both macro and micro, what are the population dynamics, what is the density, what is happening with the economy, and most importantly, what is happening with the property fundamentals. And this is the type of research we do. We have personally been to 17 different cities. We have per personally investigated 17 different cities. And we are regularly going to new cities. But at the moment, we've been investing in Orlando, North Dakota, Atlanta, Memphis, and Oklahoma. And I don't have time tonight, but again, if you want to speak to one of our asset managers, we can explain to you in a lot of detail why are we investing in those markets, what the fundamental factors are of those markets, why we believe that they're economically resilient to both the economic ups and downs in terms of both the American economy and the global economy and the type of returns, the type of value that we're actually getting there. But the number one thing, and a lot of people underestimate this, but the number one reason that we invest in an area is because of the quality of our partners on the ground and the quality of our partners to be able to execute on the opportunity. The fourth one is how do I know I'm getting the best deals? A lot of people are, are, are really confused. They look at a lot of stuff on the internet. They battle to understand the valuations. We do extensive research. In fact, we even double check our partners. Brendan and I went in May with a million dollars in our bank account. We had an American bank account. We had an American cell phone. And we went on the internet and we placed about 20 different offers with a million dollars. And we literally said cash ready to close quickly. And guess how many offers we had? Not one. Not one phone call, not one email back. And so we are constantly scouring, we're constantly vetting our partners, we're constantly, constantly understanding the deal. But I think the most important thing is that we are working with the best partners on the ground in America. And I think there's no greater testament than they are working with American investors, the best American investors, some of the biggest and most sophisticated investors in America are working with our partners. And that is testament to the fact that you're getting the quality deals. You're getting the deals that are behind the curtain that not only, you know, that the, that the average man in the street doesn't get. Only the people who are behind the curtain get access to those type of inner circle deals. A question we get asked all the time is it's so far away. How do I manage the investment? You know, it seems so overwhelming. And I always say to someone, well, if you live in Pretoria and you own a house in Johannesburg, do you have someone to manage the property? Yes or no? If you live in Joburg and you own a house in Cape Town, do you have someone to manage the property? Yes or no? It makes no difference. It makes no difference whether that property is in Cape Town or in New York or in London or in Sydney. It's the quality of your management that will determine the success of your investment. What most people misunderstand is that buying the property is only one third of the investment. Management and maintenance is the other third of the investment and, and the tax the compliance and the structuring is the other third of the investment. And we pride ourselves on providing the private banking service with an end-to-end -end solution that takes into account all the factors. And the management and maintenance is one of the most critical things. And one of the things that we do is work with companies that have everything under one roof. 
So the left hand is responsible for the right hand. And I'll be honest with you, owning property in, in London, Australia, America, and in South Africa, our properties in, in first world countries, in London, in Australia, and in America, are a lot less hassle than they are in South Africa, especially taking into account the quality and sophistication of the partners that we've got on the ground there. And also the fact that it's a first world country and things work and people respect the law and actually abide by the law. And then you've got the law there to protect you. A question we get asked all the time, how do I get finance? Again, I would please ask you to go and speak to one of our asset managers. We've got a system in place where we can get you financing 50% loan to value, sometimes as high as 60% loan to values. Our current clients, we're about to embark on a program where we're going to show them how they can get a credit rating in, in six months. They can get financing at 4.5% fixed for 20 years. And uh, it's really, really exciting in terms of what is possible when you consider that you're getting net yields of 8 to 13%. And so go and chat to our asset managers and we can explain to you how you can get financing, how you can build your credit rating, how you can take advantage of private financing until you've got your credit rating in place and then how you can actually get legitimate bank financing at really low rates fixed for 20 years in terms of where you actually are. A lot of people say, you know, you've got the property, you've got the management and maintenance, you've got tax, structuring, bank accounts. It all seems so complicated. How do you do it? How do you learn and how do you set it up in another country? And this is one of the reasons I truly believe that 80% of people that actually invest overseas lose money because they don't take this into account. And this is really our private banking solution. Now, this is just a simple diagram that I've drawn here. Brendan has actually put together a very sophisticated deal flow program where we manage it's a mind map that we manage every client right from beginning to end there's four major sections in terms of all the major parts to owning the property to, to doing the management and maintenance the tax the structuring and the bank account yaku and his team are really sophisticated now in terms of the back office and and most importantly this is our private banking service and if you sit with one of our asset managers they can take you through the whole process you can understand it in terms of how you do it a question I get asked all the time, if it's so good in America, why are the Americans not investing and why are they coming to South Africa? Well, firstly, the Americans are investing. Um, the big sophisticated investors are investing billions of dollars, both in residential and in commercial. They really understand the intrinsic value and the net yields. The individual man in the street, they're not investing at the moment, mainly because of psychology. They got nailed so badly by, by the global financial crisis. And it also really badly affected their, their credit ratings. And so they can't get access to financing and they don't have cash, which is actually great because there are tenants in terms of the market. And then why are they coming to South Africa? Well, they're not coming to South Africa. We went to America. We went to America in April last year. We went to 11, sorry, eight cities in 11 days. We went and vetted our partners. We went and found the partners on the ground there. So it wasn't about them coming to South Africa. They were perfectly busy enough with their international clients and their American clients, but we wanted to provide South Africans with the best solution in terms of what we were doing. People say to me, there are a lot of companies that offer offshore investment, and many of my friends have lost money, you know, because it all looked too good to be true in the last five years. How do I choose the right company? Well, you know, I would say get hold of one of our asset managers. We've actually got a free report on the six things you need to know before you invest offshore. Whether you invest with us or not, that doesn't bother us. What we want to do is to provide you with the tools so that you can make educated and informed decisions. And most importantly, so that you can go out and achieve your objective of creating wealth preservation, a plan B and peace of mind. And ultimately, we want to help you invest with confidence and create global wealth. And so, yes, there are lots of companies. Our free report will help you decipher who knows what they're talking about, who is legitimate, who has track record. But I truly believe that results are the most important thing. Speak to the current clients. Speak to the people that have been there. Speak to the people that have dealt with it and, and that are actually experienced and come on our buyer's trip. Number 10 is surely it's cheaper if I deal directly with the Americans. How do you make your money? John Chen always says it's a great question. Ask people how they make their money. And, you know, ours is very simple. We charge a private banking fee up front of 20,000 Rand. And that, is, uh, that actually pays for our entire private banking service. And then we work with our best of breed partners on the ground and we split the commission 50-50. So we need them and they need us. And we split the commission 50-50.
So the price is exactly the same whether you fly over there and do it yourself or whether you deal with us. And so that provides you with the peace of mind. You understand how we do it. And again, why do we do it? Well, by helping lots of other investors invest, we can help ourselves because we've got a lot more buying power and we can deal with the best partners on the ground and get access to the best deals on the ground. That is why we do it. A question a lot of people ask me is, who else have you helped? You know, show me their stories. A lot of people like to see track record. And so what, uh, what the team actually did this morning is we decided to put together just some of the clients that have invested in the last, uh, over the last year or so. So one of the guys that, that invested with us early on in August last year was a gentleman by the name of Gert Dupree. He's a farmer uh, based about two hours outside Johannesburg. He bought a really nice house in Atlanta, a real top-end house in Atlanta back in August for $135,000. His net rent was just over $1,000 a month or 9.18% yield. He's had between 25 and 30% growth. It's hard to tell exactly because he obviously doesn't want to sell the house. But if you look at comparable uh, CMAs, uh, comparative market analysis in the area, he's done between 25 and 30% growth. The RAND has devalued 23% since he actually invested. The total net income he's, re he's received for the entire year is over $12,000. And because this went so well, he went ahead and bought another unit in Orlando. So he's actually bought an apartment in Orlando. And just in the last two days, he's agreed to invest another 100 k in Wealth Migrate. It's an exclusive golf course opportunity that we have. We're buying golf, uh, plots on a golf course for literally 25% of the market value. And really, it's, it's an exciting, exciting opportunity that we've only made available to our current clients. And these are the type of people that, that get to benefit when they come on the buyer's trips because they get to get behind the curtain and see the real deals. And funny enough, he's also refinancing his Atlanta property so that he can take advantage and buying another one. So I believe there's no greater testament to what we're doing than the fact that clients are coming back. Over 60% of our current people that are investing are actually repeat clients in terms of where they actually are. Tristan is one of Brendan's clients. I'm not sure, Brendan, if you're actually online, but um, Tristan is one of Brendan's clients, and he's actually a developer, and they build hundreds of, of houses here in South Africa. Yeah. You are here, Brendan? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm online. Okay, excellent. Maybe you want to tell us a little bit more about, uh, about Tristan um, in terms of he, he invested with you in Orlando back in August 2012. He bought an apartment for yeah, 79500 I mean, that, that was an amazing apartment in Orlando. There's actually a lake right next to it. Um, so his apartment overlooks the lake. It's the, the, the top left uh, apartment in that picture. Um, and it's it was fully refurbed. Um, and as it happens, he actually gave me a mandate um, to act on his behalf when I was over in the States in August with you last year. And this was one of the properties that he bought there. Um, he also bought one in, in Atlanta at the same time. And, uh, and he's been very fortunate. They were both tenanted from day one. Um, he's received his rental income every month without any issues. Uh, and yeah, and he's had fantastic growth because he moved his money. I think it was about eight rand forty to the to the rand, um, eight rand twenty five to eight rand forty, somewhere in that range, um, when he actually bought those property. So he's had incredible growth over the last year. And I was actually checking out um, what these properties were selling for in Orlando. And uh, for one similar to his, that's got you know that's been fully refurbed with new um, with new appliances and stuff. Uh, it's going for about seventy five to about eighty thousand dollars now. Um, so he's had some decent growth in Orlando and he's had amazing growth in Atlanta. So he's quite happy. Except he was a little bit unhappy because he actually had to pay some tax this year. So he was like, "Dude, we need to get some finance because uh, I don't want to pay tax again." Well, I mean, you can actually see I was just I was clicking between the two different slides. So he's had a nine point two nine point two percent net yield. He's had 12% growth and the brand is devalued by 23%. And then in Atlanta, he's had 18.5% growth. The brand is obviously devalued by the same one. And exactly what Brendan just said, when he had to pay tax because everything was, was a net income and he didn't have anything to offset it against, he wasn't very excited. So he's now bought another one in Oklahoma and he's getting one in Atlanta, I think, Brendan. Um, and he's doing both of them on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, just, he just took one today in Atlanta now. Um, he says uh, it's time to, to ramp up a little bit. He's very happy with the progress that he's had um, and with the, the growth that he's had um, and the income. And, and he's happy with the management. 
you know, we haven't had any, any issues from that side. So from his perspective, he was extremely happy, which is why he bought another two properties from us this month. No, it's fantastic. As I say, I believe the, the, the testament is in the results. Another client that, that is really interesting, and, and Brendan was on the trip with us in October um, when, when, uh, when uh, Ian Powell was actually over there. Oh, sorry, no, Raleen came first. Raleen Powell came over, and she's actually an accountant. And she bought in Atlanta um, this house. You can see her for $95,000. The projected rent actually was $1,050 per month. And very interestingly enough, the American partners that we deal with are actually conservative. Now, this is very unusual when it comes to property management, but they actually got $1,150. So they actually got $100 more than they were uh, estimated before they bought the property. Um, they've had a 36% growth on this property. The rand is devalued 14.9% since they bought it. Interesting enough, Ian didn't come with, with Raleen, and so he came over in February, and he was so impressed by the quality of the house, the quality of the tenant, the fact that they had got more rent than they were actually promised, that they actually bought another two properties. And they've now actually immigrated to Australia. And one of the reasons they've done that is that they believe that even though they want to live in Australia, they can still get far better growth on their money in America but it allows them the freedom based on their global wealth index to live anywhere they want in the world. And they can, they can put, send their kids to whatever school they want. They can send their kids to whatever university. But most importantly, they can live wherever they want. But their assets live in a first world country where they're getting the best returns. So I think you know, they're a great example, Brendan, of, of someone who's really taken advantage of the global wealth index and understood it so that they've got the freedom going forward. Yeah, what I found quite exciting is that uh is between Rolene, who was sitting in the back of the bus as a chartered accountant, crunching the numbers, and we had another uh, friend, you know, client who became a friend afterwards, uh, Machiel. He was also sitting in the back of the bus. You can actually see the photo there. Rolene's third from the from the right, uh, and uh, they were between the two of them crunching their numbers, something chronic, uh, and it was quite pleasant to have them on the bus because they were taking the tax stuff into account. Um, and, and they were really doing their due diligence well. Um, and, and, you know, we all got the benefit of learning from them, including me, you know, because I tend to overview things a little bit, um, and they went really deep into the detail, and it still made very good sense. In fact, it made more sense after they delved deep um, than just the overview. Another, another person who came on, on that trip was Damien Talin. Um, her and her husband, Andrew and Damien, Andrew's actually a financial advisor, uh, or used to be with, with Old Mutual. And they came over in October, and, and we, we, we always joke, you know, they, they were classic. Machil was the same, actually. We call them secret shoppers. Um, they, they come on our buyer's trip, and then they tell us they're going to see friends and family for two or three days afterwards. But after a few drinks in the pub, we very quickly find out that they're going to check out the competitors who are selling stuff in South Africa. And I found it very interesting. Damien went off and uh, checked out the competitors and came back and said to, said to us that our, our partners in Atlanta had such a superior quality product to, to what they actually, um, what they'd seen with the competitors and what the others were offering. And, you know, they, they, these were the guys that are offering where they're, they're buying cheaper properties in bad areas, not necessarily good school districts. And even though the yields look better on paper, they don't get proper bank returns. And interestingly enough, both Michiel said to me when he went to look at the competitors' products, he said to me, Crosses, they're very good at Adobe Photoshop and making them look nice on, uh, on the internet, um, but they just don't compare in real life. And what I loved about this was that it's all about, that's, that's the beauty for us. We've got complete transparency. We've got nothing to hide. We can take people over. And both Michiel and, uh, and Damien invested, but um, Damien actually bought two properties. Uh, she bought them for about 95000 each. She's had about 30% growth. The RAND is devalued by 14.9%. And actually, based on this, in May, Andrew actually resigned um, and wants to do this investment from a full-time perspective. And is actually coming on the buyer's trip. I think, uh, I think I stand to be corrected, Brendan, but he's coming on the buyer's trip uh, number six now with clients because he really sees the value in terms of what we're doing and the partners. And I don't think there's any more bigger testament to the fact that the guy wants to invest more himself and to help his friends and family and his current clients actually invest in terms of where they actually are. Yeah, I actually I saw him for a coffee the um, day before yesterday, and uh, we had a long chat about it. He's very keen to come. Um, he's working out his leave and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's quite exciting. Yeah. 
And then uh, another another client, there's just two more that I'm going to share with people, but Michael and Lee Honeyset. Michael actually came over and uh, Brendan was having a baby at this time. Ryan uh, Ryan was here though. And uh, Ryan, I'm sure you'll attest, Michael was a huge, uh, huge amount of laugh and a, and a great guy that came on the trip in February. And um, Michael actually ended up buying four properties uh, to a value of $456,000. Um, I worked it out today. He's had 16% growth on his properties, which is $72,000 since February. Now, the rand is devalued by 12.9%. He's getting a net income of $3,325 a month. So that's after all expenses. So the total income that he's already earned since February is $19,955. And the question I've got for everyone is who here would like to have earned a million rand on their investment or roughly a 25% return since they invested in February? Now, the question I always get asked, people always tell me, yeah, but, you know, I can do so much better in South Africa. There's so many better opportunities in South Africa. I challenge them. You show me where you can make that type of investment and see that type of return. And those are fixed. Those are hard numbers. Those are not maybe whatever. Uh, sit, hope, and pray strategies. Those are actuals. I ask people to to show me where they can get those type of returns and those type of numbers based on buying. And, and this is in a first world asset, first world income, first world currency. Who would like to to earn two hundred thousand rand, or or in 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 six months, or roughly thirty thirty to thirty five thousand rand a month in in passive income? Anyone? Does it interest you? Well, it certainly interests Michael because he then went and invested another $400,000 recently in Wealth Migrate. We bought a, a 46 opportunities in Atlanta. We managed to pick up them at a, at a massive discount, about 20% below market value. Today's current market value. We're going to build houses there. Um, all in will be in for about $280,000. And the net sales price is anywhere from four hundred to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So there's some serious margin there, and that's what we call our growth plan. And then he's also invested in the income plan, where we're building the commercial office park with an internal rate of return of twenty three percent. And then just, but it's not all the big stuff he's doing. I know Brendan and and Ryan. He's also dealing with you, and has bought another two uh, residential properties, and and is looking for a third one once uh, once we can find him one that meets his criteria. Um, that, that's pretty much up to date in terms of where he is, huh, Ryan? But um, Scott, he's uh, been fin refinancing as, as well. So um, the, the, the financing option is, is actually taking us to a whole new level. Um, and, the, and, the, and the good news is, as, as I'm sure you always say, is that that financing option is related to the property and the asset, not on the individual like we when we get financing here in South Africa. So. So that really opens up the opportunity for people to 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 grow their portfolio over time, and you know we're looking at portfolio building where people are literally doubling their portfolios with this finance option, and then within the next five to seven years have the loan repaid completely. So you own those properties outright. So it's very exciting. No, it's, it's, and this is why this is why for me the direct results are. And anyone we're talking about, you've got the they've all given us permission to be able to speak to them. So that you can actually check it out. And then the last one on the last buyer's trip, I thought it was somewhat quite interesting. Emmanuel and Kathy actually bought a property sight unseen with Brendan on the buyer's trip in May. Brendan chose it for them. Now, they're based out of Malaysia. So no one can tell me that it's too difficult to do it long distance because Brendan's in Johannesburg and they're in Malaysia. And he, he understood what it is that they wanted. He went out and found a solution for them. He helped them invest. They came over in July. They actually saw the property. It was a Type C in Memphis. It was a small three-bedroom, one bathroom. You can see it here behind them in Memphis. They were really, really. They were, What's that? No, I was just going to say they were yield hunters. Hey? They they were looking for the best yield they could possibly find. Um, and he did his research very, very well online. He knew exactly who else was selling properties in Memphis, what they were doing. Uh, he'd done his comparative market analysis. Across uh, across the different um, wholesale providers, and uh, and when he saw that video of Hewlett explaining how they work with you, Scott, when um, when we were sitting there in the in the boardroom with him, he said all of a sudden it came home that that uh, he would be investing through other investors using their knowledge, able to leverage of their 
knowledge, their infrastructure, and um, he ended up buying with us. And he, he got, I think, uh, at that time, it was like a 13 and a, and a half percent net yield or something. So he did really, really well, and he was very happy when he actually saw it live in the flesh a year later. Yeah, well, I mean, there, there's uh, there's his wife, Kathy, and as 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 it was interesting, um, you know, I think Kathy was super impressed that everything actually worked. Um, she actually works for I can't remember exactly. I think it's the UN in, in Malaysia. Um, and and uh, the World Health Organization. I think. Which one, sorry? The World Health Organization. That's it. The World Health Ooh. Organization. And um, they subsequently bought another two properties on the last buyer's trip, and uh, now are so happy with what uh, with what's happened that they want to set up an affiliate and to help people both in Kenya and Malaysia. So, you know, I think I think it's really testament to to what is happening on the ground and, and what the type of results people are getting. But if you want to if you want to go and check it out, go onto YouTube and just type in USA Buyers Trip, and literally the entire page will come up with testimonials. Of people that we've been we've taken five buyers trips over now and these are the people that have actually come over to America they've, they've seen our partners they've got the information they've taken action they've had fun they've got to network with some of the most sophisticated investors learn from them to share their knowledge and most importantly take advantage of the opportunity so go and check it out if you want to and then the very last question is you know a lot of people have been asking why the USA buyers trip six why should they come on this one why will this one be the best? Now, I did talk about it a little bit earlier. You know, you are going to get the right information. You know, you must understand as well that we've been going seven times now. This will be our eighth trip. So every single time we go, we even get better. Our information gets better. You know, we've got great partners and we're constantly updating and getting the best and the latest information, the latest research. You'll get to meet our partners both in the residential sphere and in the commercial sphere. As I said to you, you know, we, we're going to be able to take action. You, you, we set you all up before you go. We help you set up your LLC, which stands for Limited Liability Company, which is the right way to actually own property. If anyone tries to help you invest in property in your own name, they're a shark, they're a thief. They are literally doing you a disservice and you need to run away from them, not just walk away, maybe punch them on the nose first and then run away. But um, we, you come in, you have fun. You get to spend time with, with Henny and, and to really understand the sophistication of the, of the small deals and the big deals and basically how we de-risk properties before we invest, how we take all the risk or not all the risk, but as much of the risk out of it and how we work with John Chin in terms of his deal kill and our partners. And then lastly, in terms of Mega 8 and actually coming along and seeing Jack Walsh. And, you know, a lot of people say that the, the pictures speak a thousand words and I thought I'd just show you some of the pictures. This was our buyer's trip in, in February. It was minus 10 degrees in New York. We always go to New York. I believe that going to, to America without going to New York, it's like the pulse of America. You need to understand it. And it's hell of a good fun from, a, from, a, from, a, from an experience perspective, from a tourist perspective. And then we also show you great property opportunities there. This was us in Times Square, actually, uh, with, the, with the group in May and, uh, and just being tourists and, and traveling around in terms of where we actually were. I can see that the slides are quite slow here. This picture was actually in Phoenix. It was in October last year. Brendan and myself were there with Dr. Dolph DeRus. We spent 80,000 Rand each to go on his, on, his, uh, on his property tour and to meet his golden Rolodex and actually to buy. And we were at Phoenix here yeah, actually buying auctions. There was a, the TV show Property Wars was actually going on. We also had quite a bit of fun. This was Marius, Brendan, and I in a helicopter. We flew into the Grand Canyon and... Uh, Went to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and, and had a few drinks at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. So, you know, it's not all about hard work. We certainly do have some fun and, uh, and check out the tourist opportunities. I do wish we could find some better opportunities in Vegas and certainly some good partners because uh, it really is good fun to go to Vegas. Uh, I don't know, Brendan and Ryan, maybe we, need to, uh, <laughs> maybe we need to go to Vegas anyway next trip. Um, this was a show that, uh, that we went to check out in Vegas. I really wish we had good quality partners in Vegas. What's that? What's that? Uh, what's that, Brendan? So I'm just saying, I really, wish, uh, I really, really wish we had good quality partners in Vegas because you know there are opportunities there. We found some good quality properties, um, but the bottom line is we didn't have quality partners to um, that we could trust. So and that's why we ended up, you know, not going there again. But uh, yeah, it was a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah, no. So, but look, if anyone's interested in the buyers trip, please just as Ryan said, just put your name in. 
Uh, just say buyer's trip and then someone will actually get in contact with you. I mean, this was a picture from October. You can see the date there um, with the group. It's always a nice size group, really sophisticated investors. You get to learn from them. And a lot of people say, you know, I don't want to go with other people. The greatest thing is going with other people. You get to learn from people that are highly successful. You get to have a lot of fun. And it also helps you make the right decisions because, like Brendan said earlier, you get MBAs, you get accountants, you get sophisticated entrepreneurs, you get sophisticated property people analyzing the deals. And, you know, on the last trip we had Howard that was actually a contractor. So he could look at all the different types of properties and see what the quality of the finishes were. So you actually get a huge amount of value by going with other people. This was the February trip. This was actually the house that uh, Michael bought in uh, in Atlanta. You can see um, this, you know, the, the one gentleman there is, is Peter Jack, one of the most sophisticated contractors in, in the Western Cape, owns one of the biggest companies. So it was amazing to learn from him and his experience and, and, and what they were doing in terms of where they actually were. This was us looking at in, inside an apartment in Orlando. We always get inside so that you can actually check out the property. We've got full breakdown of every property, what the rates and taxes are, what the cash flows are, so that you know what the net return are and there are no surprises. Going to the banks and actually opening bank accounts, absolutely critical. We like to work with Wells Fargo. We believe they're one of the best banks in America and best uh, internet banking so that you can do stuff from, from home. And it's incredibly difficult to open a bank account in America, but we've got the right partners to be able to help you. This was RJ actually giving a briefing. So before we go out on any, any city, we give you a full briefing. We give you a whole area analysis, why we invest in certain areas, why we don't invest in, in other areas. I mean, as an example, in Memphis, over 60% of Memphis, we don't invest in. So you need to know where we invest, why we invest, what the fundamentals are, and we give you a full briefing before we go out. And then in every city, we have a dinner where you get to meet all the partners, the accountants, the lawyers, the management agents, the inspection agents. I see zero point in going on a property tour if you don't get to meet the entire team. And the greatest thing we've got is our transparency. We've got nothing to hide. So you can come, you can meet our partners, you can see how it all works. This was another uh, dinner um, in a different city. And again, meeting all the different, apart, uh, different partners so that you can get the full update. And then this was Beale Street, having a bit of fun in Memphis. It's uh, where Elvis actually comes from. We had a huge amount of fun there. Um, there's something like 30 different uh, live bands on, on any given night. Maybe not that many every night, maybe 10 on some nights. Depends what night we're actually there. But we have a lot of fun on, on Bill Street. This was in Atlanta, in an authentic Atlanta diner, again, having a dinner and meeting the partners and the management agent and the inspection agent telling us how they do everything and why they do everything. This was actually the last buyer's trip. Howard was the gentleman I was mentioning there that um, that actually is a contractor and was, was uh, really good at helping everyone. And we had people from all over. We had uh, Adrian from Canada. Um, we had Emmanuel and Kathy out from Malaysia. So we had a really dynamic crowd. Um, this gentleman here actually made $25 million by the age of 19. So, I mean, really, you, and uh, Clive was from Australia. So you get some, some really fascinating people and their experience. This is uh, some apartments in Midtown in Atlanta that we're actually looking at purchasing at the moment, really close to the CBD, really quality, great areas, reminding me a lot about Wimbledon. And uh, the type of thing, we don't just buy one apartment, we actually buy the whole building so that we can control the HOA or the Homeowners Association. Having a bit of fun in New York, it was nice and sunny and warm. And uh, this is the bull outside Wall Street and all of us cramming in and acting like tourists. And then Henny and myself and John Chin up in North Dakota checking out the oil. I mean, if you don't know what's happening, you've got to get hold of one of the asset managers to understand what's happening in North Dakota. America will be self-reliant. Um, on OPEC by 2017. They'll become a net export of oil by 2023. You have no idea the impact. Over 10,000, sorry, 26,000 people are moving into this one little town. It needs residential accommodation. 1,300 businesses have moved there in the last two years, and there's not one square meter of, of office space. And so we are taking a lot of advantage, and we believe it's very economically resilient in terms of the oil and, and what is actually happening there. And then for those of you who don't know, it's actually Halloween isn't while we're there. Sorry? Isn't that Henny there in the middle, as well? Yeah, it's Henny, yeah. That's, so it's, it's Henny and then John Chin and myself. 
uh, where we went up to North Dakota for three days to understand and investigate the opportunity. Awesome. I mean, Brendan, the greatest thing is with Henny, with his experience, is it's asking the right questions so that we uncovered the right opportunities and we found the right partners as quick as possible. And we're basically partnering there. We're doing that $16 million office development with the number one land developer. And I mean, just to understand the level of their sophistication, they've built 110,000 family homes and over 8 million square feet of uh, retail space. And, and they've chosen us as their number one partner, both in Watford and in Williston based on our track record and our experience, both in Australia and locally. That's pretty awesome. Wow. And um, on, on a bit of fun side, we've, uh, it'll, be, it'll be Halloween again. So this was us Halloween last year in New York, and uh, I'm not sure where we are. I think we're in Atlanta this year for Halloween. But, um, and then finally, we're ending up in Mega Partnering 8, which is uh, the number one networking uh, wealth networking conference. The 800 of the best businessmen in America and property professionals are there. Um, it's run by JT Fox. We've got an exclusive invite for just 10 of our really high net worth, sophisticated clients to come with us. Henny Besaidnote has actually been invited as the number one speaker from Africa on investing both in Africa and globally. And it really, really is an exciting opportunity. It's right at the end of our trip. So you get to experience everything from a property perspective. And then we end off in Orlando with three days of meeting the best in America and, and networking with the best in America. And the greatest thing is for us as VIP clients, we, we're basically coming as JT's guests. We are not only going to, we're going to basically be spending time the weekend with Jack Walsh and learning from Jack Walsh and a number of the other top speakers. I know that um, Mark Zuckerberg's sister is going to explain the story of Facebook. Um, there's going to be JT Fox. There's going to be his accountants, his lawyers. George Ross is going to be there. You name it, the best of the the best in business in America. You cannot afford to miss this if you want to basically understand and learn from the best in America and network with the best in America. We've got the opportunity to meet with them and to come, just 10 of our clients, to come with us and to experience it with us. So in conclusion, there's only one thing to do. You need to speak to an asset manager. The asset manager will determine what you're trying to achieve and they will provide you with solutions. We don't have enough spaces at the moment. There's only four spaces left uh, to actually come on the trip. So you need to put your number in now. If you are interested on the trip, put your number in and one of the asset managers will get back to you as quickly as possible. It will be time sensitive. So unfortunately, we've only got four trips left, uh, four, four, four bookings left. And so whoever puts in their number first or whoever phones first, obviously these are work, work hours, so the, the telephones will only be on both the Joburg and the Cape Town office tomorrow. Um, but you can call this number or you can even email uh, buyerstrip at ipsinvest.com. But it is time sensitive. Whoever, whoever puts in their request first will, will obviously be helped first. And then if we, if we end up getting... You know, eight people and there's only four seats. Well, then we'll go back to who was the first person to actually, you know, to, to request it. So if you are interested, please put your number in. It's, it's really, it's not, it's no commitment. So how do the Americans say it? Uh, Brendan always makes me laugh. It's a non-committal commitment. Um, <laughs> if you're something like that. Eh? <laughs> but, uh, no, no obligation. Please. No obligation commitment. But I think the, the greatest thing is, Chat to one of our asset managers, let them understand what it is you're trying to achieve. And then once we understand what it is you're trying to achieve, we can provide you with the, the, with the best solution, whether that's coming on the buyer's trip with us. Maybe it's us helping you um, like we help 70% of our clients from the comfort of South Africa, or, or maybe just uh, getting more information and keeping you up to date. But, but really don't miss out on this buyer's trip. It's, it's the best one we've ever put together. We've got the best caliber of quality of people actually coming on the buyer's trip. It's a blend between residential and commercial. So you're going to get the best of both opportunities. The reason, and someone asked the question earlier, why do we go to multiple cities even if they want to invest just in one place? Why just come all the way to America and not understand different markets? We find it amazing. People come and they look at the different markets. They get a feel for different markets. And, and in many instances, they still just invest in the one market that they wanted to invest in. But now they have a much better understanding of the information and the partners. And so we believe that it's much more value 
to come to the different areas, to experience the different areas, and then know why we invest in certain areas, and, and most importantly, make informed and, and uh, decisions in terms of where they are. So I'm not sure, Ryan, if there's anything else from your side, but that's all from me. Um, we are going on the trip. It's at the end of October. If people want more details, please get hold of us. The asset managers will be able to run through all the details with them. But really, it's extremely exciting, and, and I'm looking forward to, to going with both Ryan and Yaku and, and Brendan and uh, obviously Henny and, and then all the partners on that side. And I, I really I can't wait to go on the trip because this one certainly is the best one we've put together by a long way. Yeah, Scott, there, there's a lot that goes into these trips. And so the best thing to do is for if anyone's interested in attending the buyer's trip or wants to know how they can take advantage of us being there, then the best thing to do is actually type your type buyer's trip in there. And if even if you're curious, if you absolutely know you have no interest in going, then that's fine. Um, if you are curious or you'd like to know more or maybe even can't make these dates, um, then what you need to do is just type buyer's trip in there We'll get back to you uh, shortly, and uh, and what we'll do is we'll actually give you a free consultation around where you are financially, where you'd like to be in the next two, five, ten, twenty years time, and how we can help you achieve that quite effortlessly, including some finance options. Going through those in detail uh, in our consultations with the asset manager. So uh, it's it's important that you guys type your details in, and we will get in contact with you shortly. Awesome. Well. Um... Thanks, uh, Ryan, for having you online. It's, as always, it's awesome to present with you. You bring such a balanced view to what we're doing. I sometimes get a bit passionate and want to share too much. <laughs> and I know that you always uh, you know, put, put the, the right information in. So thank you very much. And Brendan, thank you for sharing uh, your experience in yeah. terms of your clients and, and, and what the guys have done. And I know that um, you've been on, on most of the buyer's trips over to America and, and have basically experienced everything we've discussed about the, for the last 17 months. It has been a, certainly a roller coaster of a ride, and uh, you know I know you you're as passionate as Ryan is and myself and and the rest of the team in terms of actually helping people achieve and create global wealth. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Scott, and, and thank you to everybody else who was online tonight. It's it has been a roller coaster ride, but it's been incredibly uh, rewarding and a hell of a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, thank you. Yeah. And just, just to add on to that, Scott, I mean, we've done a 90 minute webinar here, but we could easily do a three day, seven day, you know, why invest in America and which areas. We haven't actually gone into the fundamentals of each area. You know, why do we invest in the areas that we're looking at? Um, where do you want to invest if you want to get income? Where do you want to invest if you want capital growth? Um, you know, these are all things that we can actually go through, uh, go through with you guys on a one to one consultation. Uh, we've li literally scratched the surface here. Uh, and anyone knows who's been to our extravaganzas or any of our events when we typically give away our uh, our research and and Scott's not joking I mean the, the amount of research we've accumulated over the years is phenomenal um, so if you want to get hold of that research or you want us to go through those details with you including numbers and what your current situation is the best thing you can do is type buy a strip in and uh, we will be able to have a chat with you so yeah, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Brendan. Uh, I don't think we've ever done a three-way webinar. It was pretty, pretty wild. Um, but uh, thanks to everyone online, and uh, we'll probably leave the webinar running for a couple of minutes. And if you want us to talk to you, then type your details in. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. I think Ryan also just one thing to add. Then, uh, sorry, you just triggered a thought. Was that um, you know there is so much information, and that's why the people that come on the buyers trip basically benefit the most um, because. They get to, yeah. to live, eat, and breathe it for, for, for 10 days, and they get to learn from, from us. And, you know, I, I'll never forget Tony Delata in May saying, and it's actually a testimonial. It's on a video. If anyone wants to go and watch it, go and look for Tony Delata. And he said it's the most informative week he's ever had in his life. He's never learned so much in his life, and he's one of the, one of the better businessmen I've met, um, he, one of the most creative entrepreneurs I've ever met. And I thought it was a real accolade to – not only ourselves, but to our partners, that, that someone would say that in terms of what they learned in a week, you know, and, and subsequently he's been to every USA investor breakfast and everything else. And, um, you know, so there's, you, I don't, even in three days, Ryan, it's impossible to try and share everything. And that's why yeah. we're so passionate about the buyer's trip, because then you come, you eat, you breathe it. We teach you all our methodologies. We give you everything we've got pretty much for free because we want you to learn and to be able to be successful because the more successful you are, the more successful we can be, and, and ultimately, it's a win-win cycle. You know? 
Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. It's been fantastic. Thanks for coming online this evening. Really appreciate it. And uh, if you if you do want an asset manager to get hold of you, I can see quite a few people have put their names in here. We will be contacting you. I think it's quite late this evening, so we will try and give a couple of you a call this evening. But if not, uh, we'll give you a shot tomorrow. And um, for those of you that want more information and, and we haven't answered your question, again, just please either you've got all the contact details there, get hold of us, and we'll get hold of you. And uh, we look forward to helping you invest with confidence and create global wealth. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. And we look forward to helping you in the near future. Cheers.